Thank you, Jamie. Good morning and welcome to Lovely Lane Chapel. We're glad you've chosen to come worship with us this morning. I want to introduce a friend of mine to you. Jose, welcome. Uh, everybody, uh, this is Jose. Jose has been uh, with TNT Salvage on our campus for how many months, Jose? Uh, since last November. <laughs> yes, so he's been here almost, almost a year. He is one of the primary liaisons uh, with uh, the salvage company and with Epworth. So we deal with Jose uh, on a daily and uh, especially a weekly basis. And um, we've gotten to know him real well. And, and it's, he's able to come now to worship with us. Uh, so we're, we're glad that you're here, Jose. Uh, Y'all turn around and, and say hello to Jose. So, um, well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, let us go to God in prayer. Oh God, you have given us a beautiful morning. Thank you that we were able to uh, enjoy such a beautiful sunrise. And now you have given us a day that we can uh, rest and we can be in your presence. As we worship you this morning, Fill our hearts and our souls with your spirit that we may have a real and personal encounter with you. So come, Holy Spirit, and fill this chapel. Lord, we come with different things uh, on our hearts and minds. I know Jose has been away from his family for uh, a long time now and, and uh, is looking forward to being reunited uh, hopefully in the near future. So Lord, we just ask uh, that uh, you hear our prayers that we lift up to you now in silence. Hear our prayers, O oh Lord, and grant us your grace that uh, they may be answered in your will and in your way and in your time. And so, Lord, we come to you with confidence of children of God, saying the prayer that you taught your disciples, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. <coughs> and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Uh, will you join and stand as you are able as we sing number 377, It Is Well With My Soul.
is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, it is well with my soul. affirm our faith with the historic confession, the Apostles' Creed, which is found on page 881 of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born under the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. <coughs> believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. Before you're seated, will you just turn and, and greet each other and welcome each other this morning? Thank you. Uh, we will not pass the offering plates this morning. You may be seated, uh, but they are in the narthex. If you would like to leave an offering, tithe, or gift to support the ministries of Lovely Lane Chapel, please do so as you exit the chapel. Let's go to God in prayer for these gifts, tithes, and offerings. Oh God, all that we have been given has come from your good blessing. And now we're able to offer a portion back to you to build your kingdom and to use for your ministry for Lovely Lane Chapel. So bless and multiply these gifts, tithes, and offerings. May they be given with glad and joyful hearts that we can be in partnership with you to, so that more and more people will know the love of Jesus Christ in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've been, uh, last week we started a, a new sermon series, and the sermon series is called Born to Trouble, and it's based on the book of Job in the Old Testament. As you may recall, if you were here last week, I, I said there are three stages in, in life. You're either about to face trouble, you are facing trouble now, or you have just gotten past facing trouble. Trouble comes to everyone in their lives. And like Job, the real question is not whether we will face trouble, but how will we respond? Adversity does not define us, but how we respond does. And today we're going to look at Job uh, chapter 23, verses 1 through 9, and then verses 16 and 17. Then Job spoke again. My complaint today is still a bitter one, and I try hard not to groan aloud. If only I knew where to find God, 
I would go to his court. I would lay out my case and present my arguments. Then I would listen to his reply and understand what he says to me. Would he use his great power to argue with me? No, he would give me a fair hearing. Honest people can reason with him, so I would be forever acquitted by my judge. I go east, but he is not there. I go west, but I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north, for he is hidden. I look to the south, but he is concealed. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. Will you pray with me? Oh God, no one needs to hear my words this morning, but we all need to hear you speak. So Lord, speak to us now. May everything that is said and done be of, about, and by you and you alone. In your name we pray. Amen. Now at the end of this passage, uh, basically, Job has said, I want to go to God's court because I know I'll get a fair hearing. I know that he will explain to me and I'll understand. But he goes and he looks for God and he cannot find him. I go to the east and he is not there, the west, and I cannot find him. I do not see him in the north for he is hidden. And I look to the south and he is concealed. God has made me sick at heart. The Almighty has terrified me. Darkness is all around me. Thick, impenetrable darkness is everywhere. It's basically, where is God? I am all alone. You know, the book of Job, as I said last week, is, is not a book of solutions. It's really a book of questions. And, and our tendency in life, and especially when we're facing trouble, is to search for solutions, to prescribe actions that would bring us through this moment to a happier place. But this text doesn't provide us any easier, quick solutions. There's no magic formula for, for countering the thundering absence of God in these circumstances. And when we can't approach God or when God is unreachable, unreachable in, in our existence, we often fear the God that we profess to love. You know, I think one of the things in this text in, in the book of Job is that there isn't an easy answer to the circumstances. But what there is, is there is, there are those who are willing to stand in the midst of those circumstances with those who are lost and those who, are, who doubt. And to encourage the community to stand with their brothers and sisters who might be struggling. It's not to time to abandon them because of their doubt or their fear, but rather to acknowledge that even in their emptiness, they're not alone because we are with them, even in the face of their bitter complaints. Doubt, I believe, is not the opposite of faith. Apathy is. Solidarity of brothers and sisters and the community and the family of God together. Solidarity in the time of doubt, I believe, brings peace in the storm. You know, as I've shared with you, in, in our family struggles, our friends that stood with us in the midst of those struggles didn't blame our, our parenting on what we were facing. They didn't blame that 
oh, if we had done this or that, things might have been different. And frankly, at the time, I didn't care what kind of parent anybody thought I was. Instead, our friends stood with us and by us in our time of need and despair. And it was that presence that helped sustain us during those dark times. I've mentioned the ministry of presence. A ministry of presence of being with someone in their time of need, in their time of doubt, in their time of fear. Just being there with them. It's not a ministry of solutions, cliches, or answers to circumstances which cannot be explained. It's a ministry of presence of those who are willing to share in our experience. We sang, It Is Well With My Soul. The history of, of that hymn is that the author, Horatio Spafford, uh, was a Presbyterian layman from Chicago. He had established a very successful legal practice and uh, was a young businessman and a devout Christian. And among his close friends were several evangelists, including the famous Dwight L. Moody from Chicago, from Moody Bible Institute. Well, Spafford's fortune evaporated in the wake of the great Chicago fire of 1871. And having invested heavily in real estate along Lake Michigan's shoreline, he lost almost everything overnight. In a saga reminiscent of Job, his son died a short time before his financial disaster. But the worst was not yet to come. Desiring a rest for his wife and four daughters, as well as uh, wanting to assist Moody uh, in one of his campaigns in Great Britain, Spafford planned a European trip for his family in 1873. In November of that year, due to an unexpected last-minute business development, he had to remain in Chicago, but he sent his wife and four daughters ahead as scheduled uh, on the ship. And he expected to follow in a few days. On November 22nd, the ship was struck by another vessel and sank in 12 minutes. Several days later, the survivors finally landed in Wales and his wife cabled Horatio with these two words, saved alone. And his four daughters had perished. Spafford left immediately to join his wife and this hymn is said to have been written as he approached the area of the ocean thought to be where the ship carrying his daughters had sunk. It is well with my soul. I can tell you that we were able to say it is well in our times of great trouble and of despair because we had friends who stood in solidarity with us. It was their ministry of presence that allowed us to be able to have peace like a river attendeth my way. The ministry of presence is one of the greatest gifts that you can receive. The ministry of presence is one of the greatest gifts you can give to someone. I suspect that Horatio Spafford was able to write these words of this famous hymn because he had people associated with Dwight Moody's ministry who stood in solidarity with him 
in his time of grief and despair. And because of that, he was able to say, it is well with my soul. How is it with your soul this morning? Are you like Job and facing trouble? Do you need someone to stand with you in the midst of your circumstances? Or maybe you're not in a storm right now in your life. But you know of someone else who is. And you can stand with them and offer them the gift of your ministry of presence. So the invitation this morning is, whether you're in the midst of the storm and you need someone to stand with you, my prayer is that you will find someone that will be there to be able to minister to you in these circumstances so that you can say, it is well with my soul.